Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Count Jackula. I'm the Horror Guru. And we are about to watch Breaking Dawn. <laughs> the things we do for you people in the name of entertainment. I, it, we, we brought this on ourselves. <laughs> yeah. This was my idea, so you could blame me. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> so... What we're going to do in this first half is we're going to talk about what we think this movie is going to be, and then that we will come back after we have seen it and give you our impressions of the film itself. Now, I wanted to do this one because this is where that whole story goes off the rails. Yep. Up until this point, it's been a very, like, you know, typical 16-year-old girl, you know, has unrequited love but can't give up her precious virginity kind of narrative. And this is where that that all comes to a head. She gives it up and it all goes to hell. Yeah. <laughs> she gets pregnant. She gets pregnant very quickly. She almost dies in pregnancy. Vampires tear her womb open with their teeth. <laughs> To get the child out, and this is how Bella Swan becomes a vampire. If I see that, I might like this movie. For the record, if they show if they show that, I might like this movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm predicting that this movie is going to wuss out. That we're going to get yeah. to the cliffhanger of this birthing scene, and then they're going to stop because they split this up into yeah. two movies. They wanted to do the Harry Potter thing. Yeah, and the problem is, is this novel is only like 250 pages. It is not. A story you need to break up into two parts to make a movie about. And I think the reason they did that was because they needed to buy themselves time to figure out how they were going to deal with all of this insane shit. Because they got to keep this gravy train rolling. And the minute we hit that scene, I am predicting a complete fucking train wreck. <laughs> So we're probably just going to get a lot of people staring at each other for two hours because I'm not sure how they're going to keep the narrative up that long. Um, I remember, I know we're in for something. I know we're in for something pretty terrible because I remember when the trailer for this came out and uh, I saw that they were cutting it in half and they're doing the Harry Potter thing. And I remember when they did the Harry Potter trailer. And the big thing about the Harry Potter trailer was that it's all leading up to a big climactic battle. And it's going to be the whole fate of the world at stake. And this trailer came out for Breaking Dawn, which had the same kind of tone. Except the big event is not like some sort of epic battle, but a wedding. <sighs> yeah. And 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 if you, for, for those of you who read the stories or like us, read a synopsis of the yes. novel. <laughs> because we couldn't take the, the prose. Man, the prose in those books is so bad. It's like reading a live journal post. <laughs> it is! It is! I wonder if that's how this started, actually. <laughs> like, someone's, like, just live journaling about some I love theory. vampires. <laughs> I want... I love vampires, but I don't want to have sex with them. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, because so basically what happens at this wedding is... They exchange vows. They exchange rings. She's a vampire now. Yep. Woo! Like, no, that's not something you need a two-parter to lead up to. You know? Yeah. And actually, I think they're going to get... Actually, I think they get married in the first half of the story, I'm pretty sure. Probably. Yeah. That, that was in the trailer for this one, so it better happen in this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe, maybe it's actually maybe the whole movie actually just unfolds as a wedding in real time. So that, it's like twenty four. That might be even even worse movie. Because <laughs> these two like bickering on their wedding day would probably be the most annoying thing ever. I could t I could I could totally see that now. Over here, you've got like the drunk relative who's making an ass of himself. The guy who's like wondering, should I say object at the right moment? And then you get the bride group fighting with their parents. It's all happening in front of you. The like, werewolves show up yeah. and everyone's all staring at them like, shh. <laughs> that might actually, that might actually be awesome. <laughs> I think we just wrote, wrote a better movie than this you, one. You actually may have. <laughs> Especially if it's shot like a wedding video. Like, <laughs> Like someone's walking around with a camera, it's really shitty, the lighting's oh, crap, and man. it's just like... 
Oh man, no, that would be yeah, that would be great because like don't like vampires. Even in the story, they have like enhanced senses. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe they have a like they would have a problem with cameras because they're like it looks fine to me. No, no, dude, the focus is way off. The lighting is bad. You suck. What are you, an internet reviewer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh uh, man. So we yeah. laugh now, but we're gonna be in pain in a couple hours. We la- we laugh to hide the tears. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll s- we'll 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 see you in a few hours, but you'll see us in a few seconds. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> Okay, so we saw that. That just happened. Um, first of all, let's let's accentuate the positive. It's not the worst movie I've seen, and I don't think it's even the worst movie I've seen this year. Agreed. Agreed. But I think the biggest problem that this movie had, now that we've gotten that out of the way, is that it cannot figure out what tone it's going to take. Yeah, it's really all over the place with that. For those of you who've read the book, they do it. Yep. Finally, it's about time. Yeah, they... Oh, no, I'm not even talking about the sex. I mean, they do it. They do all the infamous stuff that this story is infamous for. The best moments of the movie, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But they seem weirdly out of place. Yeah. It's just, it's so, like, melodramatic, and it's so, like, proper, and then all of a sudden just spine breaking and babies being being crawled out of stomachs it's yeah 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 now which <laughs> I, I i do have to give them credit i was like this is a horrific having actually read the scene i'm like this is a horrific scene how are they going to shoot this and the answer is actually kind of tastefully yeah but as soon as we are done with that shot we again and again get this overhead view of Bella. There she is, bleeding out of her vagina. And you're like... For the tweens. <laughs> yeah, for little girls. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, that's horrific. Certainly, we're not going to keep cutting back to that exact same shot. And they do. And they, yes, like five times they cut back to that. And you're like... And and these aren't quick cuts either. These are lingering shots. Yeah, they had to pad out this movie somehow. Lots of lingering shots. Yeah. And I don't know... What, yeah, 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 I, the, so this is part one. Yeah. And it, when you really get down to it, this is where the story ends. It really feels that way. Like, I would have no idea what the hell they plan to do next. Yeah. All the plot threads are, are sewn up. Bella becomes a vampire at the very end. They do that dramatic thing where she opens her eyes and her eyes are red. To Boom. be continued. <laughs> Credits. Actually, they didn't even have it to be continued. No, they didn't, but it was implied. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just because it's part one. Yeah. By the way, just to let those of you who want to know, it takes a grand total of 30 seconds from the minute you know the movie has started to the moment Jacob takes his shirt off. This has got to be a record. It's got to be. Yeah, there's some sort of record. I was like, holy shit, we're less than a minute in. He's got his shirt off. Yep. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> right. I'll give the movie some credit. Um, it actually had a few attempts at humor that actually worked and were funny. Yeah. But that's mostly because the dad is the best character in this entire series. Yeah, there's there's the dad and Jacob's little brother yeah, are yeah, the he was most funny. compelling characters. <laughs> because the little brother, his whole thing is he wants to be like his big brother, but he's puppy dog-like, which is actually perfect for the whole concept. He's yeah. like, hey, I'm going to help you. 
I'm gonna help you. I'm, you're my big brother. I got your back. I'm gonna help you. I Fuck like you. It. Yeah. Stay <laughs> home. I don't want to stay home. I want to help you. I, I gotta go to Tashi Station and pick up some power converters. I'm gonna take off my shirt and I'm the alpha male. Look at my pecs. <laughs> Watch me flex them back and forth. Yeah. For the tweens. <laughs> oh my god. This movie also has. Oh, God. The most irritating thing about this movie is not what they get wrong, because we expected that. Yeah. It's what they got right and then fuck up at the last minute. Yeah, Jackula had a really good analogy for this, where it's like it's like you're you're about to score a goal in a football game, but you just spike it before you even reach the uh the the, the finish line. That's that's what this movie does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's this one scene very close to the beginning, right uh, before the wedding. Bella has this dream that, you know, she's you know she's she's getting married. And you can tell it's a dream sequence because it's, it's it's shot in that dream sequence kind of way. And then suddenly, like, you know, Edward turns around. He's got blood on his face. She has blood on her hands. And they're all wearing white outfits. And I was going... Hey, like that's kind of cool. That's like that's like a wedding cake. Yeah, that's that's not a bad scene. But then we pull back, and there is a mountain of bodies arranged like a wedding cake, just to just to, 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 to spike the ball for you. And you're, I'm like, oh my god! And it is the goofiest damn shot. Yeah. You're just like, I could, I almost, I could not stop laughing. I'm like, oh my god. Well, we almost did something right there. Quick, better fuck that up. Another pretty gory moment in the movie that feels really out of place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, particularly because you would you would think that well, this is kind of foresh. Oh, oh, hold on, yeah, foreshadowing in a minute. There's you'd think that that would be foreshadowing, but it's not really foreshadowing if you give us a hugely big gory <laughs> payoff moment. Right there, no cut. Like yeah. just pull back. There it is, and you're like, really? <laughs> they are, the dream arranges all the bodies like a wedding cake. It was it was much cooler when it was just the white on red and it looked right. Yeah, she had a couple dream sequences in this movie, and oh, that was the only one where it was clear it was a dream. Some of the other ones, you're just like, wait, was that a dream, or did some of that happen and not? Because they do it. They do one dream where it's just a montage of them having fun on the uh, on the island, and at the end of the montage, uh, the 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 uh, montage kind of breaks apart and she wakes up, and it's not entirely clear if the entire montage didn't happen or if just that last scene didn't happen. Yeah, it's got a lot of unrest. It's got unrestful moments. Yeah, you know, like, I was like, oh god, no, like please stop, don't do this anymore. <laughs> and and what is she? And here's the weird thing. She she dreams mainly that they're playing chess. Yeah. That's... You're like, what? I, I didn't see the point of that. Like yeah. you think it'll be some sort of metaphor, but they're not they're not really playing a chess game like at all in this movie. They're yeah, just... yeah, yeah. It's it's more like it, God, I don't I don't know if there would be a good metaphor for what they actually do. Well maybe chess is the perfect metaphor because <laughs> they don't emote properly. No. <laughs> like there is there is one moment where Robert Patterson actually emotes, and that is when he is trying to convince Bella that she needs to get rid of this baby inside of her that is killing her. Oh yeah, you know, spoilers. Turns out the true end, the true evil is not vampirism, it's pregnancy. Yes. This movie is about abortion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In case you didn't get that. <laughs> but he's trying to convince her to you know, get rid of it because yeah. it is killing her. They do do a decent job of showing you, showing you, no, this thing is actually killing Bella, Bella Swan. Yeah. And he actually, he actually gets upset. And he's like, if you, you know, if you have this baby, I will hate it forever. I will hate it so much with my hating hate. And he actually kind of gets that. He gets across that. <laughs> yeah. like, but it's the only scene in the movie. The rest of the movie, he just got, talks like this and looks puppy dog-ish and you're just kind of like show another emotion fuck's sake yeah <laughs> yeah like and and oh and here's the weird thing like a lot of you who've uh, watched red letter reviews review of attack of the clones will be familiar with the phrase 
their beautiful and in a romantic location. They must be in love. <laughs> yes. That, that is the entire first is, half of the movie. That I mean, because they don't they don't act in love other than the fact that they are naked in the same scene. Seriously, I never got any impression that Bella had any feelings toward Edward whatsoever. Like every time she looked at him, she didn't express anything. If anything, it almost looked like she kind of looked at him in disgust, which is not the right emotion. The only way you're able to tell that she actually likes him is because they put music under it. The actors don't convey a thing. Yeah, it's all the yeah. music soundtrack, which is another thing about this movie. It's one giant music video for the soundtrack. Yep. Every five yep. seconds, a new montage with a new song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I love that one scene where, okay, so on their honeymoon, Edward's going to take them to some secret location and he doesn't tell Bella where it is, which was kind of weird. You're yeah. Like, why? Like <laughs> it's kind of rapey actually. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, I'm going to take you there. I'm going to rape you and no one's going to find you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it, like and the and the thing is is what I think what they're going for is now I picked out a secret uh, a, a secluded secret spot and I don't want to ruin the surprise. And it's supposed to be like very romantic and stuff, but actually yeah, no, it just feels date rapey. Yeah, it, it really does. And other characters kind of acknowledge that, but Bella and Edward just kind of brush it off like, no, no, we're in love. No. Yeah. And they say it, but they don't want to show it. But. So they step, so they have this weird transition where they're in the car. Bella looks out the window and you know, she's looking a little Bella Swanee, I guess. Like and she's about to sneeze. It's just, yeah, just the way she looks. Yeah. And then superimposed over the car window is a giant Jesus statue that comes out of nowhere. And then suddenly they're in Rio de Janeiro. And I'm like, wait, did the, did they just <laughs> foreshadow the transition? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Whoa, that was, why did we need to do that? There's a couple weird moments like that. They're weird transitions. Like there's one moment where it just lingers on a trash can for a couple seconds while it closes. And Oh yeah. yeah like, like, like we got the important information. Like there are blood bags in the, the trash bin. That's the important bit. Yeah. So he throws the trash thing in. We cut to him doing something. And then we cut back to the trash can closing. And you're like, yeah. Why? Symbolism. <laughs> what was that for? Yeah. You know, another man, another huge problem was there's, there's a big werewolf fight scene near the end yeah, of this movie. Is. And it's werewolves on werewolves. Now, here's the problem. They're all fighting in wolf form. And with the exception of Jacob, they never establish which wolf is which person. Yeah, and because it's shot in like really, really dark lighting, kind of like Angley's Hulk, the whole poodle fight, you can't tell which dog is which. And since they're all wolves... And there's a bottom bunch of brown ones and a couple black ones, and they all look the same color in that lighting. You you have no idea which one's which. Yeah, there's even like <laughs> a big moment where like one of them comes out of nowhere and saves the day, and you're like, yay! Ooh. Who did that? <laughs> Ever you are good yeah. going, I guess. And it's weird because th this fight scene happens, and they're freaking wolves like tearing each other apart, but. They're perfectly fine afterwards. Their perfect abs are afterwards. Their face is perfect. They have no scratches, no bruises. So apparently the fight scene would have been too gruesome, but the the near like attempted abortion thing was perfectly fine. That yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, I know what you're thinking. Well, they don't want to get too gory, except right after that. <laughs> Is bleeding out your mm -hmm. vagina. Yeah, that's that's fine. But the wolves actually hurting each other? No. No, that's that's Peter too might much. get upset. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man. Wow. Just... What what is this movie rated? Uh like it should be oh, an R. Oh shit. I don't know. Actually. It should be an R. If it's not an R, then I'm really shocked. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it is R. Yeah. Like it better be. <laughs> For tweens. For tweens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because if this is rated PG thirteen, fuck you, race yeah. association. I've fuck seen, I've you. seen I've seen movies that are less like racy than this that get R ratings, and you're just like, Paranormal Activity yeah. has like no blood whatsoever, just a couple swear words. But for some reason, it's R. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> what the hell's up with that? Yeah, like oh yeah, so like I 
Oh God. A couple of other big points that I had were, so anyone, once again, if you've read the story or read a synopsis, you're like, wait, isn't there's a point where like Bella's spine breaks horrifically. That happens. You watch it happen. It's effective. It's I, I say, very like effective, actually, because you do like you, you do you do that. Ah, yeah. like the sound engineering is great. But they do this thing when she turns back into a vampire. Do you know how like in Mortal Kombat, you would get that interior shot on some of the fatalities? Yeah, with like their, their neck breaking or something like that. They do this, but in reverse, like her whole spine realigning and it's. It's magical. She's turning into a vampire. It's it's like watching a house episode and they go inside the body yes. to like to like see the disease or anything. Except the disease is magical. It's got like this swelling music. And you're just kind of like, oh, isn't a vampirism a curse? They're kind of treating yeah, it yeah, like yeah, it's a magical yeah. thing. Like like and, and even if it and even I think even in this context, I think we can yeah, well, because because it, it like it like the book tre- the book and the story treat it as if it is this very magical yeah. thing, but the characters keep telling her over and over again that this is bad. Yeah, they even they even in the beginning have this whole scene where basically Edward admits specifically admits that he has killed humans. Yes, no mincing of words, no alluding to it. No, he has killed people and bled them to death. They were murderers right away, just to make him continue to be a good guy. But he still killed people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love Bella's reaction to this. Did you think that this would change something? And I'm like, you I, know, being a murderer and yeah. having to admit that, yeah, that might actually change a few things. If anything, it would He's, at least express some sort of emotion at the thought, you know? It's yeah. Like, like, it's like if a friend tells you an old war story, you don't just sit there blank-faced and go like, oh, so... <laughs> yeah yeah some some sort of horror some sort of shock like she could have at least looked like she felt sorry for him yeah anything but no the only per oh yeah the other thing the only person she gives bedroom eyes to in this movie is her dad and that's yeah. weird there's a couple creepy moments like that where yeah. it's like she's on the phone with him and asks him asks him to uh imagine her healthy and all that stuff and and he says, you want me to picture you and all that stuff. And it got really creepy as that conversation went on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like if ever, if anyone ever tells you that, no, no, this isn't a Mormon fairy tale. <laughs> they're lying. They are so fucking lying. You know, because the real, the real monster here is pregnancy and abortion. <laughs> That's the real monster. And like, I was wrong. It wasn't a wedding. It wasn't a, it was a, it was abortion. That yeah. Was, yeah. And it was, <laughs> it was abortion in like, 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 like abortion protester. Yes. Type of stuff. Where they're like throwing blood at you and showing you pictures of dead fetuses. Like that's this movie. It, 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 it does that and tries to make you, be, to make you believe that it is in fact a love story. Yeah. But, and I think maybe that's one of the problems because maybe the actors didn't buy it. I, they don't feel like they bought it. Yeah. Like, there, there are literally moments where it would like in normal movies, you will have a shot where you just see the the actor and their face will express every emotion they need to, and they don't say anything. You get that all the time in movies. In this movie, they try to do that, but you're not quite clear what the emotions they're trying to express are. They don't feel like they they don't feel like mixed emotions. They just feel like the actor is confused of what they're trying to emote. Yeah. And there, like, there's a moment where, like, like this one chick is totally staring at the at, at one of the werewolf dudes, and you totally get this impression that, like, she wants to bone him. But then when she opens her mouth, it turns out she wanted to kill him, and you're just like, that didn't come across at all. Like, yeah, no, no, <laughs> it, it didn't. And and I get the feeling like that was set up in the sec the last movie. It probably was. You know, I probably should have done like, my research. They, <laughs> but they did. Look, I know that it's like the last movie, and if you weren't on board before, maybe you shouldn't be coming in here. But there are some very simple things that they could have done just to make sure, because it's 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 not like you would have had to have retold the whole tale. Yeah, like the establishing of which werewolf was which, that could have been done easily. All you had to do was watch them transform, like yeah. on mass once, and then you could have gotten it. 
And it just to make sure you have like the, the werewolves who are actually helping Jacob like transform in front of you again, just to be like, all right, now remember the white one is that character. Yeah. But no, like it comes, he doesn't even like fucking wear a white shirt at any moment. Yeah. Like you have no fucking clue. Yeah, like, the, the, most of the wolf scenes, the wolves just kind of come into the scene. They don't transform and come into the scene, so... Yeah. Even, even Oh, except when Jacob is showing an emotion! Yeah, Rawr! Jacob's always gonna transform <laughs> when he's showing an emotion. Like, proper! He, his <laughs> shirt will rip, and it'll come apart and everything, and then when he turns back, he's clothed again, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just... I... I almost kind of wish that they had left him like unshirted and he just we just watched him put another <laughs> shirt on. Just 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 because like that would have that would it would have made sense. Yeah. You it know, don't make sense. Make no sense. <laughs> you know, just just something, guys. You know, just people, please. And yeah, if uh yeah, Horror Guru said this, he was like, you know, if it wasn't for the background music, we would have no idea what emotion we're supposed to be feeling. Because usually music is used as kind of a filler just to kind of to enhance the mood. To here enhance the crutch. Like, yeah, here it is absolutely the fucking crutch. So as annoying as it is to hear the entire soundtrack just unfold in the movie, you need it. Because otherwise you yeah. really have, you, you'd be confused the, the entire movie. At like, they're like the moment where she's looking over when she first finds out she's pregnant and she's looking in the mirror. Her facial expression hasn't changed from when she... Uh, so from when she didn't know she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So is she okay with the baby? Is she not okay with the baby? Is she mixed on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even you can't even tell if she's conflicted. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, even it, you literally get the impression like the actor is sitting there thinking of like, what's my motivation? Director, someone, yeah, please? yeah, someone yeah. tell me. Like, like the actors are really flaying, flailing in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it does really feel, particularly with Bella Swan, it feels like at any moment she's about to ask the audience what what her motivation is. You know, it, you're right. It really does feel yeah. like that. It's just like, what's my motivation? Why? <laughs> what's going on here? I'm pregnant. How do I supposed to feel about this? Yeah. It's you know, oh, we don't know, honey. Like, the, the guy who plays does. Edward just plays it all exactly the same. That's how he gets away with it. It's, it's always just, he's always moping. That's, yeah. no matter what yeah. it is. It's I won't like, even call it brooding. Brooding is what Angel did on Buffy. No, this guy just mopes, like, seriously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, like we don't we don't get to see a lot. Well, there's really not much to Edward's character. No, there really isn't. You know, like, it, like, even the fact that he's, like, murdered people really doesn't matter. It doesn't even show in who he is. Like, yeah, like, like he only seems like it only seems to bother him in those scenes. Like in other scenes, you never really get the impression that like he's haunted by these murders that he did. Like, yeah, and and this is what's really weird because it's it's. I, I actually feel really bad for these actors because a lot um, of them are actually pretty good. A lot actors. of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Robert Patterson actually is not that bad in certain scenes. He's very good. And so that makes all the scenes where he looks awful really painful. Yeah. Which is the majority of the scenes because you're like, well, maybe this guy just can't act. And then a scene will come along and you'll be like, well, no, there it is. Yeah. Like, you can do this. Yeah, like the scene like, where he actually got emotional. You're like, why couldn't you do that the whole movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if it's the writing or if it's just the director not doing their job. It's, it's mm -hmm. really hard. It feels like they... It, because I feel like the yeah, writing actually yeah. does have something there that it's just the actors just don't express it. Well, a lot <laughs> of the a lot of the problem with 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 the books, and I haven't I haven't read all of them. Mm -hmm. I've just read enough of them. Yeah, is a lot of it is told from Bella's perspective. So you don't really get yeah, yeah. And, and 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 no matter and and it purposefully uses a very detached language so that you as the audience, the young girl reading the book, can imagine yourself as her. Yeah. The problem is, is that I don't think that Stephanie Meyer really understands how people's emotions work. Yeah. Or she only understands how people with Asperger's syndrome emote. <laughs> people that like their only can, their emotions can only go to extremes, and they can't decide what position they're in like jacob completely flip-flops throughout this entire oh, yeah, movie yeah, whether yeah, he's yeah. whether he's pro their marriage or whether he's against their marriage whether he's gonna support them or whether he's not gonna support them you're 
Jacob is just all over the place. At least Edward, you know where he stands most of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's at least, he, he is at least like, he, what is he? He's bland. Yeah. He's blandy. He's, you know, he's just a pretty face for the tweens to Google over. And, yeah, yeah. I which, feel bad for Robert Pattinson. because I, I do, feel, I, feel, yeah. I feel like if he actually had something here, he could probably make something special. But just, yeah, and, and it's it's every time, like, every time one of these characters cries... Like, man, you do not feel it. Yeah. Because they do, because they do the sex, they, they do the really like deadpan sexy cry where like a tear <laughs> comes down their cheek, but it, it's not that like horrible, like <laughs> wail, like that, yeah. that, that horrible, like, oh God, what, what is happening? This, this is, this is something that like surprises me that I'm actually saying this. Michael Bay expresses emotion better than this movie does. Like, whoa. Like, seriously. Like, Armageddon. Like, like Bruce yes. Willis dying. Yes. Like, yes. That, that expresses more emotion than this entire movie. And this movie is supposed to be a melodrama. Yeah. It, <laughs> How do you do a melodrama where it, there's no emotion? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, one of the things I was going to say is that and it feels a lot like, uh, an anime done as an American movie oh, because of yeah. the nature of the melodrama. I can see that. But the big difference there is that in anime, the emotions are always really big. Yes. You know, like maybe that actually would have made it better. I actually wish it did go that route because if it went full melodrama, we might have got something. We might have yeah, actually yeah, yeah. felt something. But it's like... It wants to be melodramatic, and it will like have the big swelling over dramatic music, and it'll it'll shoot it over dramatically. But the actors just kind of like meh. <laughs> one one thing I, I definitely think is going to be the case for this movie, like gauging by the reaction of the audience that that we were a part of. I don't. I think when it get, gets right down to it, the young girls in the audience didn't buy it any more than we did. I, I thought that until they clapped. <laughs> As oh, we were leaving, they yeah, all started clapping. Point, but... At first, I thought people, because I heard people making fun of it behind me. Yeah, but they clapped yeah. too, so I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I get the feeling that this might be the one where, like, future girl geeks are going to go, yeah, I I like Breaking Dawn. It's a, it's a real guilty pleasure. To be fair, yeah. I will say this was better than the first one, which is the only one I've seen. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, because you at least know, you know why people are not showing the emotions they're supposed <laughs> to be conveying. You, you, you know what's supposed to be happening, even if it doesn't quite convey. Whereas in the first one, there was nothing there. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> it's all real force. Oh, 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 yeah. And, and another thing, brace yourselves in this movie that is shot primarily in the daylight because it's breaking dawn. Ooh. The vampires don't sparkle. Yeah, like, I know that the books apparently I, have, like, this, like, it's overcast all the time, and that's how they get away with it, but seriously, it's broad, it's, yeah. it's broad daylight broad in daylight, some of these particularly scenes. Particularly like, when they're in the Rio de Janeiro yeah, island. Yeah, when they're on the island, like, there's scenes with them, with them, with them like, running uh, uh, over the stream and jumping into the water in broad daylight. Then again, that one could have been a dream, we don't know. Yeah, except <laughs> that there are all these other scenes in the day... Yeah. And we were talking like full on, properly midday lit scenes. It's not lit like it's overcast. There's yeah, a certain no. way, you, like the first one was was lit like it's overcast. This one isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the first one had that like blue filter yeah. overall. Like Which this one doesn't what, have. Yeah. And yeah, they never fucking sparkle. And you find yourself kind of. I was disappointed. I was disappointed only because yeah. that's like my biggest pet peeve with the vampire mythos they do here. Yeah. I can live with most of the other stuff. The sparkling thing is just uh. Yeah, but if you take that as a core part of your of your uh mythology, it's then you gotta stick with it, man. Yeah. You it's know? a it's a big inconsistency. Inconsistency. Yeah. I can't say that word right now. Yeah. Oh speaking <laughs> speaking of inconsistent oh, I don't know if this is an inconsistency or a stupidity. Yeah. But so you get to the climactic scene. Bella is being killed by this thing. Her spine is broken. They're like, they've figured out that the fetus, like a vampire, needs blood. And the reason that Bella is dying is because the fetus is drinking her blood. Yeah. And so they're like, well, we've got 
I'm just going to refer to him as Dr. Acula. Yeah, whatever his name. Yeah, no whatever idea. the doctor. They never say it, I don't think. Yeah, they never say it in this <laughs> film. I think we're supposed to know it kind of yeah, like. Yeah, I think he was probably established in the first one. I just had. Yeah, he, he was. He, he was established. <laughs> I just can't remember his name. But the Dr. Cullen. So Dr. Acula. Dr. Acula has like a blood bank and they didn't need to establish that because he's like, he's a doctor. He's a vampire. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. And so they figure out that if they feed Bella blood, then she gets a little bit better. And the baby like stops trying to kill her. Um, okay. So spine breaks, they get her in the stirrups. Actually, wait, no, they don't even have stirrups. It's, it's no, just layer on the table slab. Oh, that. I mean, wait a minute. Anyway, that's another <laughs> problem. That's another problem. So they realize they run out of blood and they're all like, we're running out of blood. We don't have blood to feed the baby. So it's going to finish eating Bella. So somebody's got to go out and hunt. Now, who is supposed, who should do this? Probably Edward. Yeah. Maybe Edward, the maybe the two sisters, Yeah, you know, whatever. No. The doctor goes. The one guy keeping Bella alive. Yeah. The guy <laughs> keeping Bella alive. The doctor. If he dies, Bella's dead. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Off he goes, traipsing in the woods, which are filled with werewolves trying yeah, to kill Yeah, they're them. surrounding the cabin because they don't like this baby being born, and they think it's like the Antichrist, and they must destroy it. Oh, yeah. Speaking <laughs> of Antichrist, if, count the number of crosses in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Poorly placed crosses in particular. Not to mention the big Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not counting the Rio de Janeiro Jesus. <laughs> Holy crap. And they do the circle around it, like, like a Michael Bay circle around it, and you're like, oh my god, it's Jesus. Yep, because <laughs> this is a Mormon story. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, no, if it was a Mormon story, it would be the, what's his name, John Smith or something, the... the the, well, no, no, the American the Mormon, Jesus the Mormon, guys? No, the Mormons still love them some Jesus. <laughs> okay, you know? fair enough. They love them some Jesus. <laughs> they're really what I know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really into giant crosses, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's like one cross just laying in the... Uh, in the uh, yeah, in the vampire's yeah, house. And I'm just like, why is that is laying there? It's like a massive cross. Like, you could literally hang someone up on it and crucify them if you wanted to. I don't know why it's there. Maybe it was established in previous movies. But... I don't know. Like maybe maybe they maybe they're all into bondage or something. <laughs> that, 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 this, that, and one thing that really was bugging me about the movie, I don't think I ever mentioned this to you. This movie shot like really colorful and bright. Yeah, it's the yes. darkest of these movies thus far, I believe. Yeah. And and it's shot bright and colorful and it's a tone and inconsistency that just doesn't work. Like like there's a moment where where uh, where uh, Bella Bella was given a basically given the death sentence by uh by the by the uh, by the doctor guy who said that you're not gonna be able to last before the baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and it it does this this kind of pull away from her. And like in the background are like these colorful, bright, colorful, like color coded cabinets and things like that. And it, oh yeah, and it's, yeah. It, it's just like. It, you don't feel the emotion because the visuals don't convey it. It's yeah, like, yeah. You're not looking at Bella. You're not looking at Bella. And not just because she's boring as hell. You're just you're looking bright, at these colorful, colorful cabinets. You're like, where do I, what do those cabinets do? My eye is instantly drawn to them. What, I wonder, do they, what do they hold? Oh, scene changed. Wait, I was probably supposed to be paying attention to the actress there, wasn't I? Yeah, another oh, case man. where the way the first one was shot, color-wise, probably would have worked better for this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, like, well, it's like, uh, uh, Del Toro. I, le I learned this from watching, uh, the commentary of, of Hellboy. There's this. Oh, scene, the color coding thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where he talks about color coding, especially in the scene where Elizabeth is sitting in the, uh, you know, in the insane asylum yeah. by herself before they, they remove her out. The whole scene is green except for her, who's, she's wearing red. And he's like, I wanted to make sure that she felt, isolated that she felt helpless yet we symbolize the fact that she's a fire person and the eye was drawn to her that's why you use red against green because red is a voracious color and will immediately draw the eye like i'm i'm looking in this little viewfinder and what is my eye immediately drawn to that thing that red th <laughs> this yeah. red thing right there red, red will immediately draw your attention yeah. and i feel like that, which is why they use it for stoplights yeah and that, that that's why if you see blood in a scene you're gonna see it because 
red just pops out like that, especially on the screen. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't feel like the cinematographer, I don't know who shot this movie, but he didn't pay attention to color when he was uh when he was color correcting the, or not color correcting mm. when he was color timing this movie. I, I don't know if he was even like paying attention to color when it, they were it, shooting this movie. Yeah. You know, it, some some like if if they weren't deliberately doing something with color, they kind of obviously left it alone and that was a cinemagraphic mistake. You know what it was shot like? You know what it was shot like? It wasn't shot like a drama or a melodrama or even like a uh or even like an action movie or anything like that. It was actually shot more like a comedy. Like like a Judd Apatow yeah. comedy with the bright yeah. colorful like I was thinking like a lot of the scenes like it was yeah, especially me. with that like that, that sudden CGI where they move really fast. It yeah. feel a little Scott Pilgrim and yeah. stuff. Like, that. like yeah. it felt a lot like it felt like it was really shot like a comedy. They're like especially when they're tropics. I was thinking like this is shot like forgetting Sarah Marshall. Like <laughs> <laughs> I started thinking about forgetting Sarah Marshall, and then I was like, maybe I want to see forgetting Sarah Marshall instead of this. <laughs> There's yeah. actually there's actually a scene where they where they where they cut to Edward back in the past and he's watching Bride of Frankenstein. It's like big mistake movie. Now I want to go see that movie. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, one. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and bear in mind, like whatever cut of the Bride of Frankenstein they've got, it is high fidelity black and white now. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, yeah. crisp, and you're just watching. HD. The, yeah, <laughs> you're watching the Bride, and you're just like. Damn that movie! I forgot how awesome that movie is. That that could have been an advertisement for the Blu-ray. I don't know. Maybe yeah, they paid yeah, for maybe, it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe it was. But I mean, but like you pointed out, like like it may have been too on the nose. But why didn't they go with like Dracula or or something? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> oh no, because it's all about Bella Swan, so it's got to be the bride, <laughs> the bride of Frankenstein. Even though that would mean she's uh, actually that's an apt metaphor. It actually kind of is <laughs> now that you mention it. Yeah, Edward. Cullen's she denies him like, in the end. Frankenstein's now Jacob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was thinking Frankenstein is more like Edward because they have the same like basic He's emotional both. range. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's a, that's a, that's unfair to Dracula. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the Frankenstein monster because he actually does have a good emotional range. Yeah, he he. I would say he emotes. That, more. that Boris Karloff performance is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's it's a it's a subtle one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's subtle done right. This is subtle done not at all. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it, it's it's wow. Like I still can't believe we watched that. Like I, I you dragged me out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this was my idea. I was like, Breaking Dawn! We gotta, gotta see it! We gotta review it together! We'll do a vlog! It'll be awesome! And and I just... I... You, you know what the sad have, part is now? Yeah. Now that we've done this, we have to do it for the, the second one. Yes. We just have to, yeah, we have yeah, to complete yeah, the cycle. We're locked in. Um, I have no idea where the hell they're gonna go with it. I don't remember oh, reading any oh, of the synopsis oh, yeah. for the oh, end. Oh, just in case you're wondering... That whole creepy pedophilic imprinting thing that happens. Oh, God. They do it. They do it. The whole time they're leading up to it, I'm like, no, movie. Movie, I know you are not going to It's even creepier seeing it. Like, reading about oh, it is creepy yeah. enough. Seeing it and seeing him, like, get, like, that, like, lovey-dovey eyes. A moment where, like, I think he was going for a different emotion, but somehow got with lovey-dovey eyes, like... Yeah, like yeah, the same kind of look worse. he gives Bella. It's and and he yeah. wants the bone Bella. So it's like, yeah, which 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 to be fair is the emotion conveyed in the story because I did read that section mm. where I was like, okay, this is this is it. Like oh, I gotta familiarize something, familiarize myself with this. And you read it just like, uh, uh, <laughs> ah, okay, the scene's over. We're done. No, they they do it. Yeah, and then I would I would say this, if that means they translated that well because it comes across just as creepy as what he described. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. This they does it's, it's and it's supposed to be his like big heroic moment cuz he goes and saves the day and everything, but you're just kind of Oh like, yeah, and then they t and then they tell you once a werewolf is in, in, imprinted on someone, you know, he is untouchable. It is their law. And we're like well, you could have established that earlier and then actually had made that a moment. If it was established in the previous movies, it's still a good idea to mention it, like, at the beginning yeah. of this movie. Otherwise, yeah. if you haven't seen those movies, you're just kind of like, well, that's, that's a big deuce ex machina. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no werewolf will attack him now because he has a, a, a lady love that is yeah. a little girl. Yeah. I mean, like, not even little girl, like, 
baby. Newborn porn. <laughs> God. God. Oh God. If they ever make a, if they ever make another one after this, this the second part, that's where it's going. It's, it's gonna yes. Be too. Yes. Because it. I kind of feel kind bad for Jacob. Almost does. I, I gotta say, I feel bad for Jacob. Yeah. Because I really feel like he legitimately like cares. For Bella, and he's actually one of the few people who can express his emotions in the movie. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't express them well, but he does do it. He does yeah. do it. He's one of the few actors that I don't think is an actual good actor, but at least he's acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, like, you know, it does feel like like he he takes this movie. He takes he takes it from, for lack of a better way of putting it, a Twilight movie to at least he takes it to Transylvania nine hundred two one zero levels. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> Which is not great, but still, you know, yeah, that's something. But, but like, he clearly seems to actually care for Bella. Like, Edward seems to, like, do everything in his power to, like, try to break them apart. Like, always being like, oh, no, I'm going to beat you. Oh, no, I, you hate me. Blah, 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 blah. Jacob seems to be legitimately, no, I want to be with you. I love you. I'll do anything for you. Yeah. And Bella just, just all like, no, you're my friend. Friend, yeah, but I still kind of care for you in that way. But she is more physically affectionate mm -hmm. towards Jacob yeah. than Edward. Like, I, like by a mile. That's the only thing I know about this ending is that he she definitely ends up with Edward. But like, it, if, if if this movie is any indication, she really shouldn't be with him. Yeah, like <laughs> nothing good comes from him. him. Nothing good comes from it, and she doesn't seem to yeah. actually care for him. It's just, yeah. Oh man, that one that one bit where she starts begging for sex was awkward. Oh god. Uh oh, that that scene that scene was really confusing because this is just after the dream thing and uh we're not entirely sure whether the first time they did it was a dream or not at yeah, this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know if they've done it if she's <laughs> trying to go for round 2 or round it was confusing one. and she started begging for it and Oh yeah, it, it, it started. It started reminding me of like, 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 uh, like one of like the, like uh, the Vietnam prostitute in a Full Metal Jacket. Me so horny. Oh so horny. yeah, that's what it started reminding me of. I'm just like, this is getting really weird. Yeah, it's really <laughs> strange because like they've been holding off this whole time, and I, I can kind of get it, but the whole reason that Edward doesn't want to do it. A, I, I guess again because I assume that I guess he loses time. himself. And yeah, like, well, it's like you know he's super strong, and so he actually bruises her it's while the he's Superman like holding thing. her. Yeah, you know it's the it's the Man of Steel, Women of Tissue paper by Larry yeah. Niven stuff. Which if you haven't read, read it, and if you don't know what it is, then bind it, bind it. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good essay. Bear in mind that essay is entirely comedic. <laughs> Niven is not serious; he is fucking around. But this movie kind of takes that. So when he's like holding her down, when they're like in the throes of passion, he actually bruises her. And so he doesn't want to do it again, which kind of, I kind of understand, but I kind of also do that whole, like, I had to agree with Jacob. Like, granted, there would be no story if they had actually done the smart thing and made her a vampire to begin with. But that would have been the smart thing to do. And there's no good reason not to do that. Yeah. You know, it's, there is no good yeah, goddamn no, reason. I, 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 one of the things that has become clear to me about this series is Bella is incapable of doing the smart thing. Like if yeah. there's a smart decision, she will automatically go the opposite direction. And I get that, that, that people sometimes have to do stupid things in order for for drama and like problems to happen. But when you have a character that has never learned from her mistakes, it, it's just annoying. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I actually, I had, a, I had a friend who described Bella Swan. Um, he's like, all you have to do is imagine Bella Swan, not in a supernatural context. Now imagine all of this stuff is happening to her as, as it is written. And what is it about? It is about a boy and a girl who fall in love, they get married, and the, the 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 boyfriend accidentally hurts her purely by accident during you know you know the the their the, the honeymoon night, and then one day, sometime later, he finds her in the kitchen 
shitting herself. <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> And that was his take on Twilight that like, yeah, what is this? This is this is not so much spousal abuse so much as the spouse harming themselves. That actually the things I learned from this movie, Bella likes it rough. Yeah. <laughs> and that would have been that would have been okay if we just did that. She's all like, it was the best time of my life. And she's all bruised up. Yeah, and you're just yeah. like, well, then I see what you're into. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Edward, break out the chains and whips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and just, just. I do. I, I, I got to admit, though, that 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 seeing the aftermath of their sex was kind of funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. That <laughs> like, was, the whole that was shot to be funny. and, and Which is and another place where I'm like, it was shot more like a comedy than like. <laughs> yeah because the jokes yeah. the comedy jokes actually came through the emotion did not no <laughs> no oh yeah oh, oh oh another thing i hope you really um are are ha like the fact that she's called bella swan because yeah. they hit you over the head with wing and feather imagery several times yeah like it's like oh the the down of the bed we've destroyed falls around her we're like we get it Swan. Yeah. Oh, her wedding dress makes it look like she has wings. We get it. Swan. Although that wedding dress kind of freaked me out because it, like, it's one of those dresses that is basically revealed from the back, has the, the see through yeah, on the back. And it, it strongly implies that if the camera kept going, we would see the crack of her ass. Yeah, it does. It does. And it has like this weird like spine thing. So at first you think you're seeing, because she's so pale. Yeah, At yeah, first yeah. you think you're seeing like her spine just protruding out. And you're like, oh, but it's it's actually just the just yeah. the part of the dress. And that might have actually been like, that might have actually been intended to be foreshadowed. I think it was meant to yeah. be, but uh, it, if it was, it was okay. That's yeah, fine. yeah, it was serviceable. <laughs> Yeah, you know, unlike that wedding cake. Holy oh, crap. Oh, that wedding cake. Dude, you got it. Like, you, no. See the movie for this wedding cake scene. Like, no. No, go see this movie. Seriously. <laughs> go watch it. Because I'm I refuse anyway. to suffer alone, which is why we. I got him to come with me. Yay! <laughs> watch it. No, see it. They do it. This is the movie you are afraid it is. <laughs> I like the coming apocalypse. Holy shit. <laughs> oh god. And the CG has not gotten better with any of these movies. No. I no. I've seen some good CG this year, and this is not it. It's just the wolves look really out of place, and when they're interacting with each other, they look even worse. Which is weird. Oh, you have yeah. CGI or acting oh, on CGI, yeah. yet it makes it look faker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you do that, when the the times where they look okay is when they're stationary and they're pre presenting one emotion. Like like when one of the pups was cowering back, it like looked okay. When yeah. the, when the wolf was like leaping out and attacking another wolf, it was just like oh, it's it's a mess. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was it was bad. So. In conclusion, you should see this movie because <sighs> we, we had to suffer through we it. We suffered through it. <laughs> you got to join us. Share our pain. Yes. 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 Watch join the Twilight. Us. Watch the Breaking Dawn. <laughs> Four stars. It is the movie you are afraid it is. Good night, sir. <laughs>